Today, the Republican-led state government mm. will take over the largest school district in Texas and one of the largest in the country. Why is the commissioner choosing to punish students, parents, and teachers? What happened to parents' rights? That's right. Mm -hmm. Why are they taking away parent choice? Yeah. That's right. I don't know, uh, the parents who don't agree with Republican ideology, did they get a choice in uh, this decision to take over a 200,000 student school district? In fact, the Houston School District is um, the eighth largest district in the country. Now the question is, why are officials in Texas, Republican officials in particular, doing this? Why did they take control of the school district? Well, uh, the coup is slated to last at least two years and will involve replacing the superintendent and filling the school board with entirely new members. Now educators and parents are concerned that the takeover is just a political push by conservatives to privatize the school system, maybe push it toward charter schools. The announcement was made by Republican Governor Greg Abbott's education commissioner, Mike Morath. Uh, in a letter to the Houston Independent School District, uh, he said that the Texas Education Agency will install the new superintendent and an appointed board of managers to replace the current elected board. So the elected board, meaning, you know, people did have a choice there, they elected these individuals into the board, they will be wiped away. And instead, other individuals will be installed, board of managers will be installed in their place. Texas Education Commissioner Mike Morath said the board has failed to improve student outcomes while conducting chaotic board meetings marred by infighting and violating the Open Meetings Act and procurement laws. He accused the district of failing to provide proper special education services and of violating state and federal laws with its approach to supporting students with disabilities. The district sued to block a takeover. But new education laws passed by, oh, would you look at that, the GOP controlled state legislature and a recent ruling from the Texas Supreme Court cleared the way for this to happen. Now I have more details, but I wanna go to you, RM, and get your thoughts on this. I don't know, am I being a little too conspiratorial and being concerned that this is more of a coup than anything else? No, it does seem like a coup and it also seems like a part of a larger, Really, I mean, of course, like all the school privatization stuff, but it just it seems like a larger effort to make life for parents in a, in America. You've talked about this. You've done some great stories about this. Life as a parent in America as hard as possible. I mean, the school was underfunded. We have you know a bunch of documentation of that, and uh, and you know now they're doing this. It makes everything harder for any for everybody. And these are you know the same Republicans. You watch their talking heads on YouTube and all this. They want people to have more kids. You know that's one of their big, you know, part of their belief. They want more families. Well, you're making it impossible. You know, and that's what it looks like. Part of that to me. And let's just address their concern that the school district is not providing the outcomes, is not leading to the outcomes that they they would expect, right? Which is really fascinating because this is what Republicans tend to do with public schools. They push to defund them or they push for voucher programs, which is a way of defunding public schools because it takes funding out of public schools to provide the vouchers, which parents can use toward private schools that have no oversight and do not have to abide by any standards. Oftentimes they're religious private schools that also do not lead to great results because again, there's no oversight, there are no standards there. Uh, certainly no standards uh, in terms of how the public school system uh, needs to perform. And so uh, most of Houston school board members have been replaced since the state began making moves toward this takeover back in 2019. So Superintendent Millard House II became superintendent back in 2021, but his replacement has already been selected by the state. And a name hasn't even been announced yet. House and the current school board will remain until 
The new board of managers is chosen sometime after June 1st. They'll remain in place for at least two years. So the announcement of the takeover was met with strong reactions from across the state. The Texas State Teachers Association, for instance, and the ACLU of Texas aggressively condemned it. Jackie Anderson, who's the president of the Houston Federation of Teachers, said teachers, parents, and community members remain opposed to the state takeover, calling it outrageous. It's the worst news we can imagine for our students and families. As far as I'm concerned, this is a hostile takeover. So when you take funding out of the school systems, the school system will fail. That is what happens. They don't have the resources to function properly. They don't have the resources to provide the tools and the materials that all the students need to thrive and to learn the material. Uh, over the last several decades, we've seen class sizes grow bigger and bigger as a result of this. The coronavirus pandemic was a disaster for the teaching profession. Many major cities across the country are now dealing with a massive teacher shortage. So you have the right wing now seizing on this, uh, pointing fingers at the public school system and saying like they're failing. I mean, we took a huge role in ensuring that they fail. But now that they're failing, we're gonna take over. And what I'm concerned about is not only that this is gonna lead to more privatization of public schools, which is gonna be a disaster if you're concerned about student debt, <laughs> because a lot of families in this country cannot afford to pay for private schools for their kids. But what I'm also concerned about is Texas ended up being a leader in trying out policies that have spread across the country including anti-abortion policies. If there's absolutely no action in response to what Texas is doing right now, I think other states are gonna see school districts in a similar fashion. Absolutely, yeah, I think you're right. There's definitely that, I think that's the plan. I think you just nailed down the plan. And of course, this feels like moving backwards. I mean, we have living examples of the best education, public education systems in the world, you know. And yeah, it's moving backwards and it would be, you know, we've talked about this before, Anna, the idea of having these, you know, actual material social projects to put all this culture war stuff in the background. If we were to say, hey, we're America, we're gonna have the best public education system in the world. And we're gonna, you know, that takes investment, of course. Um, I think I think stuff like that would would really bring, you know, quote unquote, bring the country together, but we're not doing that. And this is a great example of that. I remember during my first debate with Ben Shapiro, I brought up how Finland's education system is excellent. And I would love to move in that direction. And, uh, you know, I, I got some backlash from the right wing for saying that. But the proof is clear. If you look at how students are performing in Finland, where they have effectively banned private education, and which, by the way, when you ban private education, that forces the wealthier individuals in the country to have more of an interest in ensuring that public schools are doing well, publicly funded schools are doing well. And so when they have a stake in that situation, a stake in the public schooling, they're gonna make sure that it's well funded, that it's doing well. And all of a sudden, um, after they took those those you know actions, they took those measures, uh, the Testing indicated that students were improving significantly in Finland. Finland has uh, some of the best performing students in the world as a result of that. But in this country, you know, we have that two tiered system. You've got the public system, which gets defunded over and over and over again. And then you have the private system, which all the wealthy people will gravitate toward. And you've got a far better education for well-to-do kids as opposed to everyone else's kids. Now, just to give you a sense of the funding issue when it comes to Houston schools, an annual Census Bureau survey of public school funding showed Texas spent $10,342 per pupil in the 2020 fiscal year, which is more than $3,000 less than the national average, according to the Kinder Institute for Urban Research at Rice University in Houston. Almost feels like they underfund schools, public schools, so they fail. And then they can point at the failure and say, see, we told you, we told you. Absolutely, and to, to just like tack on to that, you were talking about Finland. I, I didn't know about this until maybe a couple months ago, they do these yearly reports about uh, misinformation, people falling for misinformation, and what countries are the least likely to fall for in 
internet in misinformation basically. And Finland is always at the top. So it's not just this, you know, people need to be educated for jobs and all that. You know, we're in a we're in a situation right now where there's constant misinformation and you know, an educate a public education system needs to be funded and invested in so that people can know what how to analyze all this information as well. I mean, it's there there's there's so much to this that is you know, when you have a fractured system like this, it's going to cause so many problems. You can't have a functioning democracy without an educated electorate. Absolutely. And the right wing knows that. <laughs> they know. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.